Hello everyone. Greetings from Allen Overseas. Are you an NRI parent who wants your child to get admission in top technical institutes of India like Triple IIT, NITs and ISPA? Then this information is definitely useful for you. Today in this session we will be discussing about DASA and CIWG quota. DASA is a scheme which was introduced by MHRD for admissions in top technical institutes to foreign nationals, NRIs, OCIs and PIOs. So, in this video we will be knowing about overall process from registration, from fee payment, from document uploads, fee refund rules, seat allotment procedure. Every year DASA scheme is conducted by different different NITs. This year the conducting body is NIT Warangal. So, let's start. DASA direct admission of students abroad which provides the admission to foreign nationals to NRIs to OCI overseas citizens of India persons of Indian horizon PIOs to the UG and PG courses in top institutions of India under DASA scheme total 15% of seats 15% of total seats are reserved for DASA quota 15% seats are the supernumerary seats means above the total seats of the college CIWG which stands for children of Indian workers in Gulf CIWG quota is under the DASA quota means one third of total DASA seats are reserved for CIWG quota we will be knowing about that what is the CIWG quota what are the countries covered under CIWG quota in further part of this video so 5% seats are reserved for CIWG within 15% of supernumerary DASA quota one third seats are reserved. CIWG students will be having the facility to choose both DASA seats and the CIWG seats as well and they can fill their choices for both of these categories. So can fill both DASA and CIWG seat preferences in the choice filling portal. So these are the countries which are covered under CIWG. Bahrain, Oman, Saudi, UAE, Iran, Iraq, Qatar and Kuwait total eight countries are covered for CIWG quota now let's know what are the admitting institutes in which institutes you can get admission under DASA and CIWG quota there are total 31 NITs National Institute of Technology 11 triple ITs Indian Institute of Information Technology 17 other premier technical institutions and 3 SPA School of Planning and Architecture Total 2,888 seats are reserved under DASA scheme and total 1,430 seats are reserved for CIWG quota. Now let's know what is the eligibility criteria for getting admission under DASA quota and CIWG quota. So if we talk about age, you must be born on or after 1st of October 1997. What is the academic eligibility criteria? you should have minimum 60% aggregate marks or if we talk in CGPA there should be 6.5 CGPA in 12th class or in your qualifying exam. You should have completed your 12th class with mathematics and physics as core subject and one of the subject from chemistry, biology, biotechnology and computer science. You should have valid j -Man scorecard it means you should have secured a valid j -Man score for academic eligibility under DASA and CIWG scheme. This is the important requirement which is residential requirement. Indian nationals, those are studying in abroad are eligible for this. Foreign nationals, they are studying in India or anywhere in the world are eligible. And the Indian nationals, those are studying in abroad, should have completed their 11th and 12th class from abroad to be eligible for DASA and CIWG quota. So dear student, please note the academic eligibility, the age criteria and the residential requirement for DASA and CIWG quota. Now let's know what is the admission process under DASA and CIWG quota. You will have to make online registration which is the official website at www.dasanit.org this is the dashboard of DASA website and here on this one enter this is the point where you have to start your registration then after that you will have to upload the documents we will be knowing in the further part of this video what are the documents required and how much is the fee so last stage is payment through SWIFT, NEFT, RTGS and e-payment 
So let's know what is the registration process for DASA and CIWG. Create an account at www.dasanit.org. Registration completion link will be sent to your registered mail ID. From there, you will have to click on that link. You will have to enter your application ID and password and then it's done. Yo, you can download your registration form and save it. What are the documents required for registration in DASA quota? The applicant's passport, their date of birth proof, mark sheet of 10th, 11th and 12th class, certificates from the school as a proof of 11th and 12th class comp completion, your percentage and CGPA certificate from examination authorities and a proof of two years education in foreign countries which means your 11th and 12th class in foreign country and of course your JMN scorecard these are the documents required for DASA quota please note this point that your photograph should be in a clear format when you are uploading it your documents should be clearly scanned and your name should be same as your passport now let's know what are the additional documents required for CIWG quota. Copy of passport of your parents. Those are working in Gulf countries because you know that CIWG quota is dedicatedly for those whose parents are working in Gulf countries. We had already, we had already discussed about that what are the countries covered under CIWG quota. So these are the documents for CIWG. Copy of passport of parent working in Gulf countries copy of their visa parents visa with a validity copy of parents work permit with a validity a certificate from the company or the organization as a proof that your parents are working in gulf countries in case your 12th class is not completed at the time of registration for dasa of course then the candidate has to give an undertaking letter in the online application so these are the additional documents required for ciwg quota now let's know that what are the benefits under CIWG and DASA scheme. So we'll start from the registration fee and the fees for first semester. Then later on for the upcoming semester, the tuition fee will be directly payable to the respective institute where your admission will be done. So registration fee and first semester tuition fee. Dear student, let's know this carefully that admission category, registration fee and first semester tuition fee under DASA, CIWG quota, Registration fee will be $300 and your first semester tuition fee will be 62,500 INR rupees. This is the benefit which is given to the CIWG students. DASA SAR countries, registration fees is common $300 and first semester tuition fees is $2,000. DASA non SAR countries students, registration fees is $300 and first semester tuition fees is $4,000. So this is the matrix of registration and first semester tuition fee for CIWG candidate 62,500. For SAR countries student $2,000 and for non-SAR countries student $4,000. Star mark is there that registration fees is not refundable. First semester tuition fee will be automatically transferred to the respective institute. A subsequent semester tuition fee will be directly payable to the respective institute where your admission will be done and the other charges hostel fees and other expenses will be directly payable to the institute at the time of admission dear student please note that these are the countries uh, are covered under SARC South Ash Ash Asian Association for Regional Cooperation India Afghanistan Bangladesh Bhutan Pakistan Nepal Sri Lanka and Maldives these nationalities students will be paying their first semester tuition fee is $2,000. Now let's know what is the tuition fee for CIWG students. If you get admission in NITs and in IIEST Shippur, then your tuition fee will be per annum 1,25,000 rupees INR and for admission in other than NITs and in IIEST Shippur, Tuition fees will be payable as per the institution rule. So this is the benefit which is given to the CIWG student that for CIWG students, if they get admission in NITs and in IIEST, they will be paying 101,25,000 rupees per annum. And for other than NITs and trip IIEST Shippur, they will be paying the fees which is applicable as per the institute where their admission will be done. NRI candidates, those are eligible for CIWG, they will be having the option for CIWG seats as well as the DASA seats. 
they can fill their choice in the choice filling portal or they can give the preference to the DASA seats and the CIWG seats. In case they gave the preferences to DASA seats and CIWG seats and in later on at this stage if they get admission on a CIWG seat so the difference fees will be refunded to the student. Now let's know what is the seat allotment procedure in DASA and CIWG scheme. The institute and the course will be allotted to the students based on the choice filled by them. The upper merit list will be given the first priority. After that, if you do not get any seat allotment in as per your first choice, you will be getting the option based on your choice other than first choice and in the second round and in the third round. There will be total three rounds of allotment under DASA quota. If you do not get your seat allotment in first round, you will be having option for second and third round. If you do not have allotment in second round, you will be having for the third round. If you do not get any seat allotment in any three round, you will be having a special round. So these are the three rounds of allotment. Under these rounds, if you get any seat allotted to you and if you want to accept that seat, you will be having two options, accept and decline. If you do not want to accept that seat, if you want to exit from that process, you will be pressing decline option. If you want to accept that seat, you will be having the option of accept. If you get any seat allotment as per the uh, your choice which was filled by you other than your first choice, then you will be having three options accept, accept and upgrade and the decline. If you want to accept that, you will be pressing accept option. If you want to accept but in further rounds you want to upgrade your seat, you will be pressing accept and upgrade option. And if you want to decline, if you do not want to accept that seat, you will be pressing decline option. Dear students, please keep in mind that if you do not accept any seat in third round or if you do not get any seat allotment in third round, you will be automatically exit from the process or you can consider for special round. After that, provisional seat allotment later will be generated and the student can take a printout of this. This will be submitted to the institute at the time of reporting. Internal sliding will is a term which will be used based on the choice filled by the student and based on the merit list, the sliding will be done and as per the institute, they will be informed to the DASA about the vacant seat and there will be no need of fresh choice for internal sliding option. After this, if there are any seats vacant under this overall round or counseling process, the institute will inform to the DASA and the vacant seat list will be displayed on the DASA website. So there will be special round for those vacant seats. After that, the students will have to report at the institute at the time of reporting. They will be required to submit the required documents in hard copies. What are the documents required to be submitted? You can get from the institute website and the provision allotment later has to be submitted at the time of reporting. Now let's know fee refund rules. If there is no seat allotted as per your choice, if you found not eligible at the time of application process, and if you withdraw your application on or before last date of fee payment, your full tuition fee will be refunded. Second case, if any seat is allotted to you but not accepted, it means if you press the decline option, then your 50% tuition fee will be refunded. Uh, we knew that there was a star mark on the registration fee. It means the registration fees is not ref refundable but 50% tuition fee will be refunded to you in this case. Third case is saying if you accept the seat but earlier but later you change your decision. If the admission is withdrawal after joining the institution, if the seat is allotted in special round and if not joining or not providing the required documents in that case no tuition fee will be refunded to you. So let's discuss a case study. As you see that 10th class from India but 11th and 12th from abroad, you are eligible for CIWG and DASA quota. 10th and 11th class from India but 12th class from abroad, not eligible for CIWG quota. It means, it, the picture clearly says that for eligibility in DASA and CIWG quota, your 11th and 12th class should be from abroad. 10th, 11th, 12th from India, not eligible. 11th and 12th from India but 10th from abroad, not eligible. Likewise, 12th from India but 10th and 11th from abroad, not eligible and 10th, 11th and 12th from India abroad, it means you are eligible for DASA and CIWG scheme. So dear students, 
Today in this video, we discussed about the registration process, the documents required, fee applicable, case studies, refund rules and seat allotment process under DASA and CIWG quota. I hope this video will give you a better clarity about this scheme. Still, if you have any query or if you have any questions regarding this, you can directly mail us on the mail ID which is given in the description box. Stay tuned. Thank you.